From Palace to Prison Before this story, we learned about Judah and Tamar and God's faithfulness over family dysfunction. Before that, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. Their hatred and jealousy exiled Joseph to a life of labor and toil. Israel thought Joseph was dead and grieved deeply. Now we will learn about how Joseph, despite being a slave in Egypt for Potiphar, was a man of integrity and favored by the Lord, but was accused of wrongdoing by Potiphar's wife and ended up in prison, inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. Previously, we saw how Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery and that he was sent to Egypt. We also heard of how Judah, the brother of Joseph, sought to build a kingdom apart from his own family, one that crumbled before his very eyes. Today, you will hear a very different story. Joseph will be elevated from slave to a position of great authority. More importantly, though, Joseph, despite being removed from his father's home and estranged in a land far away, would lean on God for his strength. He will grow in maturity and integrity and determine to always do what is right in the sight of God. The future will look bright for Joseph, but his integrity will be tested. As you listen, pay attention to how Joseph responds to temptation. It is no mistake this story immediately follows that of Jacob and Tamar because the two men could not be more different in their actions. So, let's listen now to Joseph's story. Now a slave in Egypt, Joseph worked diligently in the house of Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Even in what seemed to be the worst of circumstances, the favor of God was with Joseph. Every task Joseph put his hand to succeeded, and Joseph worked with an excellence that could not be ignored. His master observed Joseph's success and kept him close because of it. Joseph found favor with Potiphar and became his closest servant. He was charged with overseeing Potiphar's house, and all Potiphar owned was under his care. God blessed his work, and the Egyptians thrived for Joseph's sake. From the households to the fields, Potiphar rejoiced in the labor and successes of his valued servant and friend. Soon, all he had was Joseph's to care for, all except the food he ate and the wife he loved. Joseph grew up to be a handsome and well-built man. His labor in the sun had made him tan and muscular, and he was a pleasant sight to all the women in Potiphar's household, including his wife. Her eyes lingered as she watched Joseph perform his tasks. Salaciously, she would lounge close to wherever Joseph worked. Her eyes locked onto his, and she slowly approached him. Sensually, she pressed her body against his and said, Lie with me, Joseph. Joseph immediately refused. Because of me, my master doesn't have to worry about anything, he said fearfully. He has put everything under my care. No one in this house has more authority than I, and he has not kept anything from me except for you, because you are his wife. He pushed her away, gently, trying to defuse the situation. How could I do that wickedness against him and God? After saying this, Joseph left, but Potiphar's wife would not relent. Day after day she spoke sensually to him, beckoning him into her bedroom. Yet Joseph remained upright, refusing every gesture politely. One day, as the hot Egyptian sun was setting, Joseph entered into the house to finish up his work. He came in to discover all the men of the house were gone. Turning the corner, he bumped into Potiphar's wife. She was waiting for him. She smiled, grabbed him by his garment, turned her lips close to Joseph's ear, and whispered, Lie with me. This time... Joseph could not speak. He turned his body towards the door with her still grabbing onto his garment. It slid off of him as she pulled, but he did not turn back to get in. Instead, he ran. He ran down the hall and out of the house, knowing full well he must get far away from her, lest he stumbles. 
Embarrassed and teeming with anger, she looked down to see Joseph's garments still in her hands. Immediately, she screamed for the guards. Help! she shouted. The guards came to attention. See, this Hebrew mocks us. He came to lie with me and I cried out for help. As soon as he heard my screams, he left his garment and fled. She continued to lie and weave stories about Joseph until Potiphar returned home. See how your servant has treated me, Potiphar's wife said, holding up his garment. Joseph's master writhed with anger. Like a wildfire fueled by a warm wind, Potiphar stormed out to find Joseph. Unable to explain himself, Joseph once again found himself under a fury of fists. Once again, Joseph found himself shackled by people he cared for. And once again, Joseph was thrown into the darkness. He was put in the prison where the king's servants were confined. There he sat in the cold, wondering why this was happening to him again. Yet God's steadfast love met Joseph in the worst of circumstances. Favor followed Joseph even in the dark depths of an Egyptian prison cell. Joseph became admired by the keeper of the prison, and Joseph began serving him. Soon Joseph became in charge of all the prisoners who were there with him. As it was before, whatever Joseph put his hand to was blessed. Whatever needed to be done, he leaped at the opportunity. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in his charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. Joseph is a bright young man, an excellent man. A great spirit was in him. And with hard work, he soon proves himself trustworthy to his master Potiphar, a man in Egypt of great influence and power. When we live with integrity, and when God blesses the work of our hands, the outside world can't help but notice that there is something different about us. That is what we see happening in the life of Joseph. He was a man with an excellent spirit. But not all attention is good attention. Some will see your success and either be attracted to you for unrighteous reasons, or they'll set their sights on you to take you down. In Joseph's case, he experiences the unwelcome attention of a very lustful woman, Potiphar's wife. She presents him an offer many young men would not have turned down. In fact, the world would tell someone to jump at the chance for a conquest. But Joseph was different. He knew his master trusted him, and he would not sacrifice his integrity and break that trust for momentary pleasures. More importantly, much more importantly, Joseph would not dishonor God in this way. The woman, however, would not relent, and day after day she threw herself at Joseph, and day after day he refused the temptation. How many times are we able to resist temptation the first time, the second, maybe the third, but then give in? That's why we are told to flee, to run from temptation, because it wears you down. It can beat you down and defeat you. And so that's what Joseph did. He ran away. When Potiphar's wife finally corners him in the palace alone, he doesn't offer kind excuses or polite refusals. He runs. His garment falls to the ground as he runs away, and the scorned woman decides that since she can't have him, she will make him pay. She accuses Joseph of assault, and unable to defend himself, Joseph, who did the right thing, is thrown into prison. From one pit to another, Joseph is once again in chains. He's in a pit, he's in a prison, and he is powerless. But he is not alone. He is not abandoned. For even there in prison, God shows his favor on Joseph and is with him. Soon, Joseph becomes leader over all the other prisoners. Even in this moment, God is preparing Joseph with the skills that will one day help him serve well in the land of Egypt. But for now, Joseph must look to God, even when he cannot see the future, and lean on him and trust him with all his heart. And that is exactly what he does. Dear Lord, help us to follow Joseph's beautiful example of integrity and run away from temptation, resist the devil, and that we would honor you with all of our actions. We know there might be a high cost to this, but we also know that you are faithful to sustain us and never leave us. 
Thank you for your enduring love and kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.